today i will be talking about uh, pre predictive understanding of extreme precipitation uh, over the hindu kush himalayas uh, and how with, with climate change uh, what is happening uh, my predecessor has nicely set the stage of uh, the impact of uh, heavy precipitation extreme precipitation on flood events on flooding and um, so uh, uh, so my theme is also based on that uh, on the heavy precipitation intensity uh, from the from the ipcc report it has come out with some very powerful messages uh, for the current state of the climate system already human induced uh, climate change is affecting weather and climate extremes in every region across the globe and uh, we see heat waves heavy precipitation droughts tropical cyclones and also there is a very strong attribution to human influence especially after uh, since ar5 and uh, in for the future the, for the future projections continued global warming is further projected to intensify the global water cycle uh, and also its variability so it is not just the mean is going to intensify also the both the wet and dry extremes are going to intensify the variability is going to intensify also the global monsoon precipitation and the severity of wet and dry events uh, so what it means is with uh, with climate warming with every uh, increment of global warming the frequency and intensity of extremes are going to get stronger so be it the hot extremes like over land so they are going to become more frequent with additional global warming for example now with at a 1 degree warming which is what we are having presently the hot extremes 10 year extremes uh, have become 2.8 times more frequent and with additional warming the frequency of these events are going to increase it's not only the frequency also the intensity for example a 50 year event more intense event they are also going to become more frequent with further warming and the same is true for heavy precipitation event over land uh 10 year events which were happening once in the pre industrial condition now they are happening uh one point there's a 30% increase in the frequency and with additional warming 1.5 degree which is in the next 20 years what is projected they they will become uh, uh, 1.5 times more frequent and with additional warming the frequency of these heavy precipitation daily precipitation events are going to increase likewise it's not only the wet precipitation also the droughts uh, the agricultural ecological droughts they are also going to become uh, more frequent and also intensity will increase especially in the drying regions and uh, so these are all very important messages uh, this is because as the temperature warms and uh, in areas where there is drying the soil moisture evaporation uh, the uh, evaporative dem demand of the atmosphere will will increase so soil moisture will decrease in those areas so now we come to the uh, hindu kush himalaya uh, what i said in the initial few slides was based on a global assessment from the ipcc now coming to the hindu kush himalaya why is this region special this is a region which has the strongest uh, monsoon systems on the globe the south asian monsoon it is a source of 10 major asian rivers and it is the largest reserve of ice outside the polar region it's a biodiversity hotspot uh, it has a diversity in culture traditions and languages uh, this is from this slide is from my colleague dr sabin from our uh, mois national climate change assessment report yeah you can also click once more dr ankit so these are the as i said the asian water towers the glaciers in the hindu kush himalayas and the rivers they are the, the most important water resource for several asian countries there are 10 major river basins that extend into eight countries this i picked from the ec mod and uh, there is a very nice assessment report from the uh, ec mod uh, on the hindu kush himalaya assessment uh, where in particular uh, we have written a chapter on unraveling climate change in the hkh region rapid warming in the mountains and increasing extremes and uh, this region uh, uniqueness it has a very strong seasonally reversing monsoons winter we have the winter monsoon uh, northeast coming uh, northeasterly winds coming from the asian continent uh, towards the equator and uh, they bring lot of rainfall to, particularly to peninsular india and some parts of northeast india but the main monsoon season is the summer monsoon season during uh, during june july august september and uh, it it provides the main supply of water 
most mostly 75 percent more than 75 percent of the annual rainfall or much of the country and the south and southeast asian region is received during these four months and there are very strong seasonal reversals in the winds and uh, the temperature gradients associated with these wind reversals next slide please and uh, now uh, people have analyzed from the long-term data how the hkh has been responding to climate change and this is one of the regions where the rate of warming is uh, is all is much faster than the global mean in the last, uh, particularly after the 50s, the HKH has warmed at nearly a, at 0.2 degrees per decade. And um, uh, so this is a way, and in particular, the some of the regions uh, in the high elevation regions, the rate of warming is even accelerated. Minimum temperatures have also increased uh, in the recent times. And uh, the diurnal temperature range, this is a very clear signal of the global warming. If the diurnal temperature range is becoming smaller and minimum temperatures are uh, increasing, that is one of the uh, clear signals of the global warming. Next slide, please. And um, also, when you compare the warming over the Himalayas, the rate of increase is much higher, what is shown in the gray line, compared to the warming over the Indian landmass. So the Himalayan region as particularly warming has been high and uh, especially the higher elevations when you go out to elevations more than two kilometers above sea level altitude. So those elevations in particular, the trend of warming that we see is much higher. And this is known in the literature as uh, elevation dependent warming. Uh, the physical mechanism of this is not well understood, but many regions in the Himalaya, the higher elevations are warming at a faster rate and particularly during the winter time as compared to the annual mean. Winter time warming has been stronger and also it is projected to increase in the future. The future projections are suggesting indicating uh, rapid warming of the HKH region. And of course, the precipitation, annual precipitation is projected to increase. This is from the CMIP-5 models with uh, increasing temperatures. Of course, snow, snowfall, uh, snow cover is going to decline, it shows a decrease. Uh, but winter time itself, the snow uh, we have seen in the recent, in the historical period, there has not been much change. And in the future, there could be a slight decrease in the snow cover, but precipitation, especially annual precipitation is projected to increase. Uh, as I said, uh, the HKH region receives rainfall both uh, during the summer season as well summer monsoon time and also during the winter months. And uh, But when you look at the May to, this is from uh, Bukhag and then Burbank. They did a complete Himalayan hydrological budget. Uh, this is a paper in 2000. And uh, if you see the annual uh, rainfall, mean rainfall, you can see substantial rainfall uh, all along the slopes of the Himalayas. And uh, uh, the central and eastern Himalayas, much of the contribution, more than 60% of that comes during the May, May, May to October months, during the summer monsoon. And whereas when you go to the western uh, Himalayas, Northwest Himalayas, especially the high elevation regions, the Karakoram and so on, uh, winter time precipitation is substantial, could be substantial. That is an important point. Next slide, please. Uh, and uh, the this region is unique, where especially the Indian summer monsoon, because um, it has multi multi scale interactions. There are processes happening on multiple time scales. You have the Tibetan plateau, which gets warmed up uh, during the uh, right from the pre monsoon months. It acts like a heat source. And uh, because of the uh, warming of the land and the high elevated Tibetan plateau, the oceans are at a remail uh, because of the high heat capacity. The oceans warm at a slower rate. So you have a differential temperature thermal contrast, which sets up the monsoon. And uh, from the so the winds which blow from the high pressure to the low pressure region. They are, they, as they are due to the rotational effect of the earth, you have the cross equatorial flow. The winds pick up moisture from the Indian Ocean, from the Arabian Sea. And when they interact with this uh, orography over the Western Ghats and the Burmese mountain, uh, they produce substantial amount of rain. And there are also various uh, uh, rain producing systems like the monsoon depressions, uh, low pressure systems and so on. And uh, uh, so uh, precipitation is produced by a variety of processes and there are some extreme uh, heavy rainfall that happens over the western uh, western or maharashtra and gujarat uh, which comes due to what are known as the metropospheric cyclones 
and uh, there are also these uh, slowly varying um, uh, northward moving cloud bands organized rain bands which move from the equator to the north on the in, on the subseasonal time scale so they also produce a substantial amount of rainfall uh, during the summer monsoon season and uh, so you have a variety of rain producing systems synoptic systems low pressure systems organized convection em embedded mesoscale convection and so on and uh, so the question is with climate change what is going to happen how is monsoon going to change how are these monsoon synoptic systems going to change what will happen to the precipitation and it is also monsoon is also affected by external uh, remote influences like el nino southern oscillation or the effects of the iod and uh, also now climate change is also affecting so this is a very very important question next slide please so uh, as i said we are due to the uh, when the clouds various cloud systems are producing uh, rainfall they also release a huge amount of latent heating this we have to keep in mind so now with the trim satellite data it is possible to estimate how much is the latent heating you can get the spatial distribution the horizontal as well as the vertical distribution and um, uh, so the the heating is very substantial the latent heat of condensation when the water vapor condenses into clouds and um, due to this in the upper level we have a very planetary scale feature known as the tibetan anti cyclone so this is the warm air is rising and at the out, there is an outflow at the upper troposphere at about uh, 2 200 150 hectopascals and you see a very strong anti cyclonic flow uh, why i am telling is this is a very global feature and this was first identified in 1971 and uh, so when the monsoon convection becomes very unstable due to strong convection the anticyclone can really become unstable and uh, these can lead to heavy precipitation events such as the uttarakhand event next slide please so this is a very important dynamical feature so i will give some examples like the heavy rainfall uh, uh, over northwest himalayas the june 2013 uttarakhand rainfall and the floods and also I will give some example of the 2010 heavy precipitation over the upper Indus Basin over Pakistan and parts of India and the lay flash floods. Also, we have uh, examples of heavy rain uh, over northeast Himalayas, over, uh, over the uh, Assam region, over the Gauhati region uh, due to flooding of the Brahmaputra. And uh, these, are, these normally happen when, when we have a break in the monsoon. Uh, this heavy rainfall over northeast can happen and uh, the question is if climate change is happening what will happen to the precipitation extremes over the hindu kush himalaya so i will try to cover this part aspects in my talk next slide please so this is this was in 2013 uh, around june 16th we had very intense rainfall over uttarakhand over kedarnath and uh, many large areas of uttarakhand very very heavy rainfall i'll show those numbers and this led to flooding uh, over Hardwar, Rishikesh, and this uh, massive Shiva statue. This was washed off on 20th June. And uh, my colleague did this study, Vellu Ratal. He looked at some 34 heavy, heavy rain events composited over this, uh, over this region in the Western Himalayas. And they all have a very similar type of uh, uh, pattern, circulation pattern, large scale dynamics is very similar. This is the region over the Uttarakhand where this heavy rainfall happened. And um, uh, so, as I said, this Tibetan anticyclone, which I mentioned, this was a time, this was 16th of June. It was a, a case of a very early onset. The monsoon, uh, there was a low pressure system from Bay of Bengal. It moved very quickly from the bay and it carried the moisture towards uh, in this region, to, uh, towards the Uttarakhand region. Simultaneously, there was a deep uh, trough. This is in the upper troposphere. You have a very deep north-south trough right, extending right from the polar regions, from the Arctic. And this persistent trough, this, uh, so as the low pressure system from the bay moved uh, rapidly, the anticyclone, upper tropospheric anticyclone became unstable, started wobbling. And the same time, there was this uh, low pressure trough, deep meridional trough extending from the mid latitudes. And the convergence of these two, you can see this even at uh, the mid tropospheric level, uh, the moisture, there was a very strong convergence of moisture in this region that, that led to the heavy rainfall. So it is a case of strong mid-latitude and monsoon circulation interaction. You can see the evolution. This is on 13 June. 
you can see uh, the low pressure system located over the east coast it is moving westward on 15th and on 17th and then a strong intruding trough and uh, there was a very strong moisture convergence this is the precipitable water you can see the convergence of moisture the flow coming from the bay of bengal also from the arabian sea increasing the moisture convergence in this region and producing heavy precipitation next slide please and uh, so as i said you can see this was an example of a, this is a polar low and this is the subtropical low and uh, and when you look at the isentropic surfaces you can see a very strong interaction of this extra tropical circulation with the monsoon uh, low level uh, flow from the bay of bengal which led to this heavy precipitation event next slide please and uh, when we looked at and this was not very localized it was widespread over uttarakhand and many areas received more than uh, 300 400 millimeters of rainfall in a day and uh, very very intense and uh, so these are some of the stations that we have uh, seen this is a paper by uh, ranal karetal so many areas in uttarakhand they received very he very heavy rainfall in a day and this event lasted for a couple of days next slide please and the models uh, in our uh, institute some people even tried to forecast this more uh, whether we can predict these type of events and uh, what they found was although we are able to do predict these events uh, there are some indications you can do it about 10 days in advance uh, they could not get the amplitude of the mid latitude trough that influenced uh, they, they had difficulty and also when you look at the circulation response this is from observations and this is at model at two def different resolutions there are some differences in the in the in the way the monsoon flow uh, is uh, simulated in the model as compared to observations so these are issues that we really need to improve even the model uh, simulation of these uh, mesoscale convective systems and the monsoon features next slide please and another example is the lay flash flood this happened in 2010 and lay is a, this is in the ladakh region it's in the jammu and kashmir state it's a high altitude cold desert uh, and uh, it was unprecedented. So, July 2010, late July 2010, immediately after the Pakistan Indus flooding, just a week after that, uh, there was a massive uh, flash flooding in the Leh region. And uh, this led to torrential rains. And this was caused by, from the satellite data, this, this study by Rasmussen House, they noted that this was triggered by successive mesoscale convective events that led to the flooding. Next slide, please. Basically, they looked at the Meteosat uh, images and also the reanalysis uh, circulation products. You can see the, the low level moist, the monsoon circulation from the Bay of Bengal, which is taking the moisture into this region. Uh, but si simultaneously over the Tibetan plateau, uh, due to the heating in the daytime, due to the diurnal variation of convection, afternoon and late evening, these deep convective storms were getting generated. And these diurnally uh, generated mesoscale convective systems, they kind of propagate uh, from the Tibetan region uh, further westward. And at the same time, when you have the moist flow coming from the Bay of Bengal, so as the moisture gets pumped into these uh, mesoscale convective systems, so in the Leh Ladakh region, the moisture is forced to undergo up, uh, uplift and it can trigger very heavy rainfall. And uh, rainfall, heavy rainfall can also be triggered by uh, patterns of sea surface temperature gradients in the Indo-Pacific. And uh, this was a study by our colleague, uh, doc, our student, Dr. Priya. Uh, she looked at the heavy precipitation over the Pakistan upper Indus basin during 2010. And we noted that the warm sea surface temperature conditions in the Indian Ocean and also there was a very strong La Nina ongoing La Nina. It affected, it altered the large scale circulation patterns and the, uh, the moisture that evaporated uh, due to the warm SST was transported by the monsoon flow towards this region, towards the upper Indus basin. And this led to extreme heavy, extreme heavy precipitation and strong convection over the region. Next slide, please. And uh, the other example that I wanted to tell is about uh, during normally during summer monsoon time, there are many times over central India, the rainfall will be very low in the court during July and August, uh, especially in poor rainy season, we call it break. And this break can last for several times, uh, several, uh, several days and sometimes even several weeks, a uh, couple of weeks. So, uh, so during these breaks in the monsoon, what many times we have seen is 
northeast india gets rainfall especially over assam region and uh, arunachal pradesh and manipur especially the flooding of the brahmaputra and its tri tributaries these are all some examples during 2017 and they can be very severe next slide please and they lead to a lot of damage and now the uh, national remote sensing agency produces this flood hazard zonation maps uh, for the brahmaputra and its river basins uh, we we can get this for every every monsoon season for the entire period so this is something this is one more region where we we have some understanding of how these heavy precipitation and flooding happens next slide please and uh, people have documented it's not only assam and uh, um, uh, regions in the arunachal pradesh and meghalaya also some parts of nepal slo slopes of nepal heavy rainfall occurs during these breaks in the monsoon so when the break in the monsoon occurs rainfall over india much of the plain of india is less but uh, we see very intense rainfall over the northeast and uh, because uh, over central india you have a high pressure anomalous high pressure about 3 to 4 hectopascal so the winds are very weak rainfall is weak but uh, we see that this time rainfall this uh, the monsoon trough shifts to the foothills himalayan foothills and there is flow of moisture from the bay towards this uh, uh, meghalaya region towards the assam region and uh, the subtropical westerlies which are generally more uh, poleward they kind of shift southward so the interaction of the uh, subtropical westerly and you have the moist flow from the bay of bengal can trigger heavy rainfall over the uh, assam region and during breaks so it's a very unusual phenomena and uh, these the models are also we, we did some experiments trying to understand what we, what happens to the monsoon different uh, uh, and with anthropogenic forcings like greenhouse gases so if you have only greenhouse gases what we found was uh, the the monsoon precipitation increases and also the circulation intensifies and uh, you have less rainfall over uh, northeast india uh, but you have drivers like aerosols especially like the sulfate aerosols which with scatter radiation uh, or uh, more uh, absorbing type of aerosols uh, they can really cool the surface and uh, and because uh, and they can offset the effects of the greenhouse gases and just with the anthropogenic aerosols which uh, which are happening over the A asian continent also also over the europe and mid latitude region uh, north american regions the effects of these anthropogenic aerosol they can affect they can offset the greenhouse gas forcing and weaken the monsoon circulation so in this case we see the effect of the aerosols we see more precipitation over the northeast himalayas just like a break type of situation so these are all some of the internal dynamics and now another important driver is uh, with uh, human with anthropogenic uh, climate change and global warming one of the big signals we are seeing is the decline in the arctic sea ice so uh, projections are indicating that uh, in the next 40 50 years arctic may be completely practically ice free uh, with with future warming and this has big implications for the circulation changes last next slide please and uh, uh, so one of the important effects what is known as as the arctic amplification uh, because normally uh, the polar jet stream is confined and this is the region of the cold polar air and which is well separated from the well, from the subtropics and subtropics and uh, but if the polar uh, if the due to warming if the arctic starts warming and the ice starts melting then basically the temperature gradient between the mid latitude and the poles is going to weak uh, is going to weaken and this will weaken the polar jet stream uh, basically the jet stream will become weak and uh, this will lead to more wavy nature it will start meandering as the way, uh, as it weakens Uh, uh, and due to arctic amplification the jet stream will weaken and you will see these large waves uh, meanders in the jet stream next slide please and studies have shown that with the rapid arctic warming and this meandering of the jet stream uh, you can get uh, heat waves uh, extreme heat waves like the european heat wave in 2010 russian heat wave and also heavy precipitation which happened over pakistan and so on so these wave, large scale dynamical changes in the uh, in the uh, mid latitude jet streams and the polar jet stream can create these type of extremes in the mid latitude and the and the subtropical areas next slide please so that is something we have to keep in mind and furthermore uh, another important consequence is the warming of the himalayan region and the tibetan plateau 
observations in situ observations have shown that the this region has warmed about uh, northwest himalayas at about 1.6 degree during the last century and particularly during the winters and i also said that earlier that the high elevations uh, elevations which are more than 2000 meters they are warming at a faster rate compared to the low elevations next slide this is known as the elevation dependent warming and uh, so winter time also you can have important implications this is an example of a, these are disturbances that come from the mediterranean region and these disturbances they propagate uh, along the subtropical jet stream and when they when they encounter the himalayan orography which has strong gradients especially the western himalayan orography these troughs can anchor so and we call them in the literature as western disturbances and these western disturbances give a lot of rainfall over parts of northwest india normally during from december through through the winter and even early spring and this was a and what we see is sometimes these troughs in the western disturbance can extend very much southward and you can get rainfall even over maharashtra pune mumbai and so on and uh, they they are important source of precipitation and uh, very recently when in nainital what we saw the heavy rainfall last week uh, was also due to a western disturbance but interestingly that was also interacting with a, a convective system coming from the bay of bengal it was a very particular peculiar case of a western disturbance and uh, cloud systems coming from the bay of bengal that led to the heavy precipitation next slide please and uh, we tried to look at these type of western disturbances with the high resolution model how whether climate change can affect it and this is where this model has a very high resolution of about 35 kilometers grid and is a global model and uh, what we found was a historical simulation with both natural and anthropogenic forcing that is greenhouse gases aerosol land use land cover change we find that in this particular experiment heavy precipitation that exceed the 90th percentile uh, they actually increased over this region over the uh, northwest himalayas very similar to the observations and this we also see in the future projection the heavy precipitation events are going to increase in the in a, uh, rcp 4.5 scenario next slide please and uh, why is this happening when we try to understand we find that uh, from the observations the increase in the heavy precipitation are due to the increase in the amplitude of the western disturbances especially over the karakoram himalayas the amplitude of the uh, western disturbances are, are increasing the amplitude variations and that is why the extremes are happening that was our assessment and why is this this related to climate change next slide please what we found is uh, uh, this seems to be related to the warming of the tibetan plateau especially the elevation dependent warming as the higher elevations get warming uh, warmer at a faster rate it sets up some kind of a large scale change in the large scale sub background circulation and uh, so you kind of get a very large scale anti cyclonic flow stationary pattern over the tibetan region and further on the western side you see a kind of a stationary trough so this kind of change in the background flow due to the um, uh, elevation dependent warming of the tibetan plateau the stationary wave pattern they can facilitate the amplitude variations of the western disturbance that was our idea next slide please so uh, basically what what i am telling uh, what i am trying to say the, the there are going to be increases in the frequency and ex, uh, intensity of hot extremes as well as heavy precipitation and as well as droughts and also tropical cyclones and uh, reductions in the arctic sea ice snow cover and permafrost so what are the consequences so with increasing uh, temperature surface temperature the immediate consequence is water vapor will increase in the atmosphere with every 1 degree warming water vapor will in increase by 7% uh, by the clausius clapeyron equation so heavy precipitation will also increase at the same rate and uh, so with further warming there is going to be more water vapor that means the same type of events what we are seeing like the uttarakhand the intensity could be much severe uh, with warming and also the effects of the arctic amplification what we saw those changes in the uh, jet stream and, and uh, the the meanders in the flow mid latitude circulation patterns and the subtropical patterns they can also uh, in intensify the extremes extreme precipitation events so clearly what i want to highlight is the indian monsoon is a multi scale interactive phenomena it has its own internal dynamics and uh, land sea contrast convective coupling and uh, now uh, there are also the, due to these coupled interactions the precipitation patterns can be affected 
Also, there are teleconnections like the Elino Southern Oscillation, the Pacific Decadal Oscillation, IOD, MJO. They can also affect the precipitation processes in this region. In addition, on smaller scales like the cloud microphysics, the aerosol cloud interactions, and these are all very important aspects of the monsoon systems. And on top of that, we have the external forcing due to the uh, increasing greenhouse gases, aerosols, land use, land cover change. They can also, they have a substantial impact on the flooding, uh, impacts due to flooding. And uh, there are very sec various sectorial impacts on water, agriculture, energy, health, ecosystems, environment, which require adaptation strategies and policy making strategies. And clearly, we need to develop capacity to do these things. And uh, to address this complex problem, we need various methodologies. You need computer simulations, earth simulation models, and models of various complexities, application models like hydrology, crops, energy, so on. You need observations, also satellite data analysis, data assimilation, data assimilation, ensemble prediction tools, uh, because this is not a deterministic problem. Uh, so you need an ensemble of predictions and you need complex systems, uh, advanced techniques to see these complex systems, networks and so on. So in short, um, heavy precipitation in the HKH and third pole, uh, particularly during the summer monsoon, it involves uh, atmospheric dynamics, the monsoon circulation, Tibetan anticyclone, monsoon and extratropical circulation interaction, clouds and convection, how the mesoscale convective systems, the latent heating, moisture transport and uh, sea surface temperature gradients in the uh, tropical oceans. And I gave some examples of the Uttarakhand event, uh, the upper Indus precipitation event in 2010, the Leh event in July, August 2010, and Northeast heavy, Northeast India heavy precipitation during monsoon breaks, winter western disturbances and precipitation of western Himalayas. So the impact of climate change on these extreme precipitation can is very much possible because of the increase in the water vapor in a warming climate and also the deep convective systems over the tropics, monsoon and the third pole uh, environment are projected to intensify as the water vapor increases and also intensified moisture transport into precipitating regions. There are also other drivers like the Tibetan plateau warming, declining Arctic ice, sea ice and uh, large scale circulation anomalies, increased snow and glacier melt over the Himalayas and also the regional land use land cover changes. And uh, so clearly we need to improve the prediction potential of precipitation in the HKH and third pole. How do we do that? We have to enhance our early warning systems, the observations, uh, radar, satellite, balloons. We need to uh, improve our data. We are doing a good job, especially the assimilation of the winds, the divergent winds, water vapor, clouds and convection, high resolution modeling with improved physics. And now new techniques like the artificial intelligence and machine learning, which are data driven approaches, they can also improve some of the map model parameterizations. And we have to link research to operations and applications. So uh, we need both strengthen basic research, education, capacity building, but we also need to connect them with operations and applications. So this needs a very coordinated strategy involving water, agriculture, transport, disaster management and defense and so on. Yeah, thank you very much for your kind attention.